Oh, good golly, Miss Molly. We're we're looking at earnings yet again. We're seeing nothing but Mariana Trenches. Mariana Trench everywhere. I mean, we're talking about pew, right to the center of the Earth. Earth's core has just been hit by Roku stock. It's getting unstable, folks. Uh, wild stuff. Down 8.4% after hours. You see this dip, man? Scary stuff, but uh, let's look at these earnings and see what's going on. Um, just obviously the prerequisite here is I always um, always like to look at the stock's performance. Year to date, up 32% is actually in a great shape compared to the general market by all standpoints, and up 154% in the last year. Great movement, great movement on this stock in the last few years. So definitely you need to take that into consideration when you uh, see a massive drop like this, that it could be something that, frankly was baked in ready to happen um, as a result of it so we'll take a peek peek at these earnings and see what happened uh, major thing for a company like this primarily a streaming company streaming based this is a subscription based company um, for the most part and the issue is with subscription based companies all that they care about is numbers numbers and outlook of subscribers that's all they care about subscriber numbers and outlook of subscribers they don't care about fundamentals okay that's what you got to understand about Wall Street these people don't understand the company they just want to look at a big number and say I like big numbers I like them okay that's the thing about these guys let's look at these earnings mm. gap EPS of 52 cents massive for this company a company that's really struggled with profit in the past puts up a, a pretty big number for them that's really nice to see and the revenue standpoint it's beautiful 645 million up 81 percent year over year beats by 26.7 million i like that quite a bit so again we'll look um it's going to be numbers we know it's going to be subscriber numbers that's going to be the issue here platform revenue came in at uh 532 million uh, versus they meant to put a just pretend I typed that VS VS dot even though I only you only heard two key presses probably but that's what's good about this mechanical keyboard so clickety clackety you think I'm typing even though I'm not um, uh, so 49 uh, 494 million estimate it's a big beat big beat on platform revenue but here's where we see an issue Active customer accounts came in at 55.1 compared to 55.8. That alone, that 700,000 subscriber number, regardless of the growth year over year, is going to be the issue. And streaming hours, kind of disappointing, 17.4 compared to a 19.19 estimate. Here is where I think it's a lot better than what people might expect. So where you see a miss in the average uh, or active customer accounts, you see a massive beat in the average revenue per user. And this is what really makes up for that. If you're anyone with a physical brain, whether it be, I mean, even if you had a subconscious AI brain, I mean, frankly, you could figure this out easier. If you've got an IQ over 50, not want to throw anyone under the bus here, but Wall Street, I'm throwing you under the bus. You can understand that you're more than made up for that when you grow that average revenue per user, even if your users don't necessarily grow at the pace you expected. You outgrew your average revenue per user by a massive margin. That makes up for it. I mean, what can I say? Uh, estimate, estimated guidance at uh, 675 to 680, uh, 685, not bad at all. Let's zoom in. I'll have a shareholder letter. They don't really give a good press release. Um, Roku's not a, their investor relations team. They say, we're not messing with the press release. We got a shareholder letter. We're not going to waste time copy and paste. And you guys can suck it. We don't have time to prepare that. That's fine. I get that. I get that. And I kind of respect the hustle. I do. Platform revenue of 170% year over year. Great stuff. Gross profit up 130%. Beautiful. Um, active accounts increased 1.5 million uh, year over year or quarter over quarter even. I mean, even then, that's that's pretty nice. Uh, streamed hours, though, decreased a billion hours um, compared to what they were a quarter ago. So I can see where that's some negativity. Again, in a hyper-growth company, which, frankly, based off the revenue numbers, still in hyper-growth mode. If you're growing... I almost died there. Recently ate some 
peanuts. Peanuts. Don't get that out of context. No deep fakes of that one. No clips, please. Uh, and they get stuck in the throat. Everyone knows it. Like when you eat granola, it gets stuck in the throat. You can't get blamed for it. Sometimes it just gets stuck in there and you got to take a swig, but I don't have a water with me. But we're okay. Still hyper growth if you're growing over 50% year over year. I'm considering you hyper growth. Let's just be clear. Um, so uh, if they weren't necessarily in that percentage growth standpoint, I'd be a lot more concerned with that. But I think it's an area they can greatly increase and that they increase the average revenue per user then this company's got room to stand on okay um look at active accounts here q2 last year was at 43 million users now it's at 55 so you're talking a 20 percent year-over-year growth in users and people are still giving it the poo poo platter they're treating it like this earnings is the poo poo platter it's not you know i think the poo poo platter is actually a delicacy frankly um by all means um it's like the you know turkey butt in Norbit. It's a delicacy, frankly. Uh, ask Terry Crews. I don't know. Uh, that was a joke, by the way. But uh, look, everything I can see here looks great. Year-over-year growth numbers looking fantastic. Player gross profit saw a decrease, which again I'm not too shocked about that. Uh, player gross profit. It's not where it's at for them. They're selling these at very discounted rates to these. Um, you know, to get these streaming sticks out there. They're focused on platform revenue. That's where it's at, platform revenue and gross margin. They're not really cared about profit on there. Their major profitability uh, market there is going to be on their platform, which isn't, isn't bad. As far as Outlook's concerned, gross profit at 315 to 325, fantastic for them. Um, net income, uh, I'd like to see a lot better. Uh, it could be a negative three million or seven million, so uh, somewhere in the positive, low single digits is what's expected. Frankly, that's where the company's typically posting. So I'd like to see some some growth there. Uh, I would, I really would. So again, content, I get it. I, I get your content. This is just typical shareholder letter nonsense. Is where they sell the company. I want to look though at your balance sheet, frankly, because that's what I'm that's what I'm here peeping. I'm peeping on this. I see you. Uh, you can't hide from me. That's not creepy. <clears throat> Total current assets. That's right. I'm excited for this. Uh, six months comparison makes me pretty happy. Right now sitting at $2.7 billion. Uh, really $2.8 billion. We can round that up, frankly. It's pretty darn close. Um, we can round that up. Yeah. Even though $800,000 is quite a bit of money to me, but, you know, what, what can I say? We'll round it up in this standpoint. And then we'll say $1.7 billion of six months ago. So big growth there, all in the cash position. Total assets in general, 3.6 compared to 2.2. Big growth there, mostly, again, because the current asset line. Where we see liabilities, good to look at that. Um, total, uh, total current liabilities. At 611 billion compared to 520. Um, yeah, you know, they grew their current assets by quite a bit more than that, so I'm not shocked there. Um, some accrued liabilities piled up. Total liabilities in general at 1 billion compared to 942 million. So, stockholder equity has seen actually a pretty nice increase over the last six months 2.5 billion compared to 1.3 billion nearly double the equity in a matter of six months and this balance sheet was one that i found relatively weak i think there's a lot of room to grow with this balance sheet still too and i'm a fan of a balance sheet you know i love a balance sheet more than many is this reaction justified frankly it's not justified but here's why i think it's fine you're talking about a company that's trading a market cap prior to this of uh, 55 and a half billion dollars this company uh, brought in only $1.7 billion of revenue last year. This year, probably $3 billion. Trading in a market cap at a very high rate, we're talking near 20 times that value, if you even account for this year's potential earnings. Plus, it's a company that still has yet to find a stride in profitability. They're pretty consistently hovering around the even line, but they have a massive opportunity for margin in the future. So, I get why it's down, I do. But I think that average revenue per user line is really significant if you're a Roku shareholder. Not a company I'm buying right now, it's not. But this could be a buying opportunity if you're a Roku shareholder because it hasn't been at these levels in quite quite some time, right? 
you know, we, we've seen um, really since June, this thing's taken off. So if you forgot to buy back in May and you love this company, uh, again, I think there's still plenty more downward movement that could happen, and who knows where it opens at. But the reaction, I think it's it's not justified, but I think the upward movement we've seen over the last year wasn't quite justified either. So that's what I got for you. Hope you have a good one.